This chapter will be a basic skills review. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to determine the better buy and how to determine the true cost of something that you've purchased. Alright, hi everybody. So we're taking a look at pricing and currency and in this lesson here we're going to take a look at the better buy and true cost. And so this follows really nicely from work that we would have done previously on unit rates. Okay, and you're going to see that in just a moment here. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the better buy. So like it says here, we're often going to see questions like ask us this, which is the better deal? Which is the better buy? Okay, which is which is the the one that allows me to spend less money but get more? So in order to um, to fairly compare two two prices, okay, and that keyword there is fairly, we have to compare them for the same amount. And so the easiest way to do that is to compare the the unit price of each, okay? Because sometimes if you're looking at like you know your five dollars per you know two and a half kilograms and you know seven dollars per three kilograms here, maybe well, which is that would be a yeah. Anyway, it would be clear which one is the better buy there. But anyway. Um, but something like that, where maybe you're not quite sure what the what the the ratio is, which one is this better per unit here. That's what you want to do is you want to reduce that down to money per single unit. Okay, that in most cases that is going to be the clearest way to do that. It's not the only way you ha you can do it. Um, you can you can choose to make it whatever amount of uh, object or thing that you're buying that you want but usually to reduce it to a unit price is, is the easiest so for example which is the better buy five pounds of potatoes for seven dollars 92 cents or seven pounds for ten dollars 22 cents which is actually quite quite similar to what i was just kind of setting up there so what i want here is i would like money per pound okay how much money per one pound here so and this 92 cents per five pounds LBS here. So what I'm going to do is divide, just like we were doing with those unit rates here, 792 divided by five, and that's going to give me one dollar and 58 cents roughly per pound. Okay. Over here, I'm going to have ten dollars and twenty cents per seven pounds. And again, I'm just going to take $10.22 divided by 7 and I'm going to get $1.40, sorry, $1.46 per pound. Okay, actually per yeah. 1 1 LBS pounds, okay? Probably don't need the S at the bottom there because it's it's just a single pound there. We'll just take those off here. Per 1 pound per 1 pound. So, clearly this one here is the better deal. Not by a ton, but it is the better deal. Let's take a look at another one. Which is the better buy? 15 sheets of plywood for $637.50 or 8 sheets of plywood for $378 here. And again, we want money per sheet of plywood. So we're going to start with $637.50 per 15 sheets. And so on my calculator here, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go $637.50 divided by 15 sheets. And that's going to become $42.50 per one sheet. Okay. Now we take a look at the next one here. $378 per eight sheets. Okay. So $378. And we get $47.25 per one sheet. So which is the better buy? Well, it's that first one. Okay, $42 per sheet as opposed to $47 per sheet. And what you're noticing in general is that the more you buy of something, usually, usually, uh, the, the smaller the unit price. But the trade-off is, is you got to buy more of it. Eight sheets of plywood. Well, you're not going to buy 15, right? You just you just wouldn't. That would be a waste of money. 
Okay, but if you if there were two different places here and you were going to buy, for example, let's say you needed you needed 14 sheets of plywood, well, you know, maybe maybe you'd compare those two and you'd see which one was cheaper per sheet and then you'd you'd go to that particular store there. Um, okay. So Paul hosted an annual wrap-up uh, party for his hockey team last year. Uh, this year he is hosting the party again. Oh, sorry. You know what? As I was going through this, I realized what I might said might, might have sounded confusing. If this was 15 sheets for that much money, but you needed to buy 15 sh- sheets to get that deal, that's that's where that would have been an issue. Um, if they were selling it for $42.50 per sheet, uh, well, then... Yeah, you would you would clearly go to if you're at this store and you said, "Well, I don't want 15 sheets. I only want eight sheets." It might be that that price would go up. Sometimes you have to buy more to get that price. Sorry, I just realized that what I said there might have been misunderstood. Anyway, let's go back to this. Paul hosted a an annual wrap up party for his hockey team last year. This year he's hosting the party again, and like last year, he'll be serving prime rib roast. Last year he bought eight kilograms for 173 dollars twelve cents. This year, more people are coming, so he bought an 11 kilogram roast for 249, uh, sorry, 254 dollars and 98 cents. Which year was the better price? Okay, so 173 dollars and 12 cents for eight kilograms. So let's figure out what that is. 173, whoops, 173.12, sorry, 173.12 divided by eight. Okay, and we get 21 dollars and 64 cents. For one kilogram. And now this year, $254.98 per 11 kilograms. So $254.98 divided by 11, $23.18 per one kilogram. Okay, so in this case, he got a better deal last, last year was the better deal. And that's typically happens because food prices go up. Okay. Even though he's buying more and normally you'd think the unit price would go down when you buy more. Yeah. When there's a time separation in there, um, that, that has something to do with it. Prices change. Okay, now we're going to take a look at true cost. I'm just going to read this through with you. Sometimes bad things, sorry, bad things just happen when you, with something you just bought. So you get home from the grocery store and you buy, find out that some of the berries that you just bought were moldy. Okay, so you thought you had a whole little uh, uh, fruit or berries. Some of them you just can't eat. Alternatively, alternatively, you buy some candy from the store and realize that you were they charged you for more than you received. Okay. Uh, in such cases, the unit price you thought you were paying is actually different from the unit price you actually paid. It's typically more cost uh, because what you what you got was less than what you thought you were getting. And so the unit price that you actually paid, that's called the true cost here. So let's take a quick look at an example of how that works here. So Musa bought f- uh, five baskets of raspberries for $3.99 per... On his way home, he dropped two baskets... What was the true cost per basket? Well, each basket was supposed to be $3.99, and he bought five of them. So how much did he pay at the store originally? Well, that's going to be five times $3. Okay, each one of those cost $3.99. So five times $3.99, he paid, sorry, $19.95. Now, that's not going to change. He he's paid that money. It's done. He's given it to the store. He's walked home. He has basically what we have here is this exchange. He paid nineteen dollars and ninety five cents. He received what he believed was going to be nineteen dollars and ninety five cents worth of berries. On the way home, he drops the uh, the baskets. So what? Di- okay, sorry. After dropping the baskets, did what he originally paid change? Yeah, no. No, he still paid nineteen ninety five. Now, the question is, how many did he end baskets? That means he only had three baskets. Okay, well, let's figure out what happened here. So he still paid 19.95, dollars 
but this time it was three baskets. Is how much did he pay per basket? So we're going to figure out the unit cost now. Nineteen ninety-five divided by three, and it's six dollars and sixty-five cents per one basket. Okay, so you can see this is actually what he paid uh, per the item that he got. He he thought he had five baskets of fruit. He actually only ended up with three, but he still only paid he still paid twenty bucks. So splitting that twenty bucks up is was six dollars and sixty five cents per basket. Okay. Similar sort of thing happens, by the way, when you. Um, when you kind of get older, let's say you're going to buy something and you finance it. It's a similar sort of a thing. Uh, when you finance something, that means you can't pay for it outright. So you have to borrow money from like an institution and then you pay back interest. And so what you pay, like the, let's say it's a vehicle, maybe the vehicle costs $10,000, but you've got to borrow the money and you're going to pay back more. So the true cost of that vehicle is actually going to be, you are going to pay more than $10,000. And you just got to be prepared for stuff like that. Let's take a look at another example here. Angela bought six kilograms of oranges for $3.49 per kilogram. When she got home, she realized she had to throw away two and a half kilograms because they were moldy. So, you know, like they could be like the oranges in the middle of the bag sort of thing. They get, they get squished and, and then they, they get moldy here. So what was the true cost per kilogram? Now, bear in mind, the true cost... Uh, the total amount that you pay never changes. So what the first thing to do is figure out, well, how much, how much did she pay? So six kilograms multiplied by $3.49 per kilogram. So six times $3.49. So she paid $20.94 for those six kilograms of oranges. But, okay, but she ends up losing two and a half kilograms which means that she's actually only has three and a half kilograms. Take six and subtract two and a half kilograms. We get 3.5 kilograms. So she paid $20.94. She gave the store that money. But now it, it, that money was not supposed... Okay, that money should have covered six kilograms, but it didn't really. It only really covered three and a half kilograms that she's actually going to be able to eat. Okay, so really, what did she pay for? Well, twenty dollars ninety four cents for three point five kilograms. Let's divide that out. Twenty dollars ninety four cents divided by three point five, and we get five dollars and ninety eight cents per one kilogram. This is the actual amount that she paid, not the price that uh, that was advertised at the store. Now, I, I don't want this to be confusing here. It's not like this happens all the time. If if she got home and all of the oranges were okay, not a problem. She paid $3.49 per kilogram, and that was the true cost. It's only if there's something that forces you to actually readjust the amount and you actually end up with less than you thought you should have. That's where we get in, run into this problem and the true cost is different. Last year, Mel bought five bags of planting soil. Each bag weighed six pounds. She spent $46 in total. When she was loading them into her car, one bag ripped open and spilled entirely. Oh, it happens. Okay, stuff like that happens all the time. Or, you know, you're at, at a, a fast food place. You buy that drink. You turn around and you bump into something and it's gone. It, at, a, at a fast food joint, typically you, you could... You, you get that filled again but stuff like this happens all the time you you buy stuff you walk out the bag rips you lose it you have that that you know carton of eggs you accidentally drop it it just it just happens so what was her true cost per bag well she bought five bags each bag weighed six pounds and she spent 46 dollars in total so in this case here i don't need to figure out how much she spent in total we got it so she spent 46 dollars in total but this time here, not for five bags, uh, actually for four bags. So forty-six dollars per four, uh, four, boy, uh, four bags here. So forty-six divided by four, and so she spent eleven dollars and fifty cents per bag, per one bag. Now, what was her true cost per per pound? Okay, well, 
in this case right here, to, uh, per pound, what we got to do here is figure out, uh, well, how many pounds was that? Now, she still only spent $46. What I got to do now is I got to figure out how many pounds she ended up with here. Well, five bags, 30, sorry, five bags, six pounds, that was 30 pounds of soil that she bought. That's not what she ended up with, though. What she ended up with was four pounds there. So 46 divide, whoops, 46 divided by 24. And so that's $1.92 uh, per pound. Now, actually, just, just for interest sake here, let's figure out what it, what it should have been. Okay. When, when she bought it at the store, what, what did she buy it for here? So how much per pound here? So she spent $46. Uh, she was supposed to have walked away with 30 pounds. So let's just figure that out here. $46 divided by 30 pounds. Okay, it was advertised at $1.53 per pound. Okay, but she actually ended up spending $1.92 because she lost that one bag entirely. Anyway, I hope that helps.